Hello everyone, Dr. Vasquez here. What I'd like to do is introduce myself and also give you an update on some new information and a new presentation that I have on fibromyalgia. This presentation will be given as part of my role as the Director of the Medical Board of Advisors at Biotics Research Corporation. Our next event will be at the Florida Chiropractic Association's Winter uh, Convention, and this will be held at the Waldorf Astoria in Naples, Florida. This event has been approved for continuing uh, education. Quick introduction to some of my previous publications you can see listed here. I've published about 100 articles and letters and editorials in various uh, scientific publications as well as professional newsletters and magazines and newspapers. I've written 10 books. The most recent book is called Fibromyalgia in a Nutshell. This was edited by my friends Lisa Scholl and Annette Diarmata. All of my books have been peer reviewed. My first publication on fibromyalgia was through the Institute for Functional Medicine for Continuing Medical Education. This was published in 2008. I recently updated that information and published it in the newest version of my integrative orthopedics book. A smaller publication with this information was also published as Migraine Headaches, Hypothyroidism, and Fibromyalgia. Most recently, that information has been updated again to Fibromyalgia in a Nutshell a small standalone book that only addresses the topic of fibromyalgia. I'll review some, some of that new information with you now. This book, of course, does uh, review the 1990 criteria for fibromyalgia. These have been replaced by the 2010 criteria for fibromyalgia, which I have some concerns about. Uh, these new criteria make the diagnosis much less specific so that more patients will be diagnosed, and they'll also be diagnosed for longer periods of time. I also have some concern about these new criteria because they were sponsored by the drug company that sells the drug uh, that's been FDA approved for fibromyalgia. So there's a clear conflict of interest when the drug company has begun to define the very disease that they are treating with their medication. Because if they, make the, if they were to influence the criteria, for example, to be less stringent, then more people would be diagnosed, but the conflict of interest is obvious because that would mean that the company sells more of its drugs. So because of that, and because of my following the research literature on this topic for several years, I do have some concerns about the medical management or perhaps the medical mismanagement of fibromyalgia. I'm concerned that the new diagnostic criteria for fibromyalgia were sponsored by a drug company. As you can see here from the 2010 report, uh, these new criteria were sponsored by uh, support, as they say, from the drug company that profits from the diagnosis of, of this condition. Eli Lilly actually sponsored the new uh, revisions of the diagnostic criteria and, made, and perhaps influenced the criteria to be much broader. Uh, so what we can say about these new criteria is that they were funded by a drug company, as you can see quite plainly here. And also we see that the criteria have become much more loose and much more broad, much more um, nonspecific, or I should say much less specific, so that more people can be diagnosed and they can be diagnosed for longer periods of time. Uh, I'm also concerned that most review articles published for doctors so that doctors actually know how to treat this condition, those review articles are actually uh, also funded by drug companies. If we look at this article published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in uh, 2000. 11. Uh, this is called The Science of Fibromyalgia, and one of the concerns I had as I was reading this article is that uh, they just seem to promote the model that this condition is uh, of unknown origin, the patients just have uh, too much pain sensitivity called central sensitization, and that the only treatments available for these patients were drugs. And I uh, clearly disagree with that. Uh, I am concerned that all of the authors here were actually paid by the drug companies as well, as you can see here from the uh, front page of the article. Uh, first author uh, was paid by Pfizer as well as Forest Laboratories as well as Eli Lilly. And those are the three drug companies that sell the FDA-approved drugs for fibromyalgia. So you can see here uh, the authors uh, sponsored by Pfizer, Pfizer, Eli Lilly, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Eli Lilly again, and Pfizer. Uh, this article was also developed, as you can see here, by a group called the Fibro Collaborative, which they 
uh, described themselves as a diverse group of leading experts, uh, they were also sponsored by the drug company. Forest Labs also paid uh, some of the authors here as well. Uh, this was a peer-reviewed uh, medical journal article, and so it had to go through an editorial process. And as is shown on the last page of the article, uh, the editor of this article was also paid by the drug company Pfizer. Uh, I'm also concerned that all three of the drugs that are FDA approved for fibromyalgia are actually potentially dangerous. Uh, I review this in my book. They're not only dangerous, but they're expensive, and they don't address the underlying problem. Fibromyalgia is not a condition caused by a drug deficiency, and it is certainly not due to this phenomenon called central sensitization. So one of the models that's promoted for fibromyalgia is that these patients have just become too sensitive to pain, and therefore they need to take drugs for the rest of their lives in order to mask or alleviate that pain. I completely disagree with that. The information I reviewed in my book, I think, makes this quite clear. Let's look at some of the drugs that are approved for fibromyalgia. First drug that was approved is pregabalin, approved in 2007 by the US FDA. You'll see that it carries a black box warning because it increases the risk for depression, suicidal behavior, and suicidal action, namely suicide attempts. The drug also costs between $94 and $190 per month, depending on the dose. The next drug that was approved in 2008 is duloxetine, also known as Cymbalta. This drug costs about $170 a month. And as you can see here, it also comes with a black box warning for its increased risk for suicide, uh, suicidal behavior, suicidal thoughts, and depression. Finally, in 2009, milnasopram was approved. You'll see that it also comes with a black box warning due to its increased risk for depression, suicidal behavior, and suicidal action. This drug also costs about $144 per month. So again, if you look at the last three points, point number three is all three drugs carry black box warnings due to their increased risk for depression, suicidal ideation, and suicidal attempts. The drugs are expensive. And they really don't address the problem because fibromyalgia is not the result of a drug deficiency. It is certainly not due to central sensitization. The condition is treatable with skilled nutritional intervention as reviewed in my book. We address the gastrointestinal dysbiosis. We correct the nutritional deficiencies and imbalances. And we restore mitochondrial function. Those are the ways that I will teach you how to address this condition from a primary integrative care model suitable for medical doctors, osteopathic doctors, naturopathic doctors, and chiropractic doctors. So I look forward to seeing all of you in Florida and uh, reviewing this information with you. Thank you very much for your attention. This is Dr. Vasquez, and I'll see you soon.